I think the politicians need to come down here, spend a day. I mean, Malcolm Turnbull's probably never even made a lolly snake in his life. I'm Aaron Gox. I want to shine a light on the unsung heroes of Australia. That's why I've come to the true home of journalism, Vice, to help the everyday working class legends that don't get a fair run in today's media. Why aren't they ever on the news every single day? I'm going to hit the streets of Australia to meet real Aussies. Welcome to Goxie's Australia. So I've come here today to Alan's Lollies factory to meet some real Australians. The ones that the fat cats in Canberra and the mainstream media try to hide from you. This is where classic Aussie lollies get made, such as the snake, the frog. All right, let's head in. Hi, Vince, is it? Yeah, g'day, Coxie. How you going? Good, thanks. Welcome to Broadford. Let's get you kitted up. Thanks, buddy. So, Boxy, a bit of an overview of the process. Uh, we receive all our raw materials and we mix them all up in a big tank. Um, and then what we do is we stamp out the moulds in starch and once those moulds move along the process, we squirt the hot syrup with the colours and the flavours uh, into those moulds and they get stacked and they'll go away. This guy Vince was such a great bloke and when it comes to being knowledgeable about lolly snakes, he would have to be one of the top ten people in Victoria. How many snakes do you reckon you'd make here in a day? Uh, in a day we make uh, just over about 27,000 kilos worth of snakes. Geez, that's a lot of snakes. Yep. So how long have you been making snakes? Well, this particular site has been making snakes since its inception in 1982. And snakes have been made long before that, even at the South Melbourne site, since 1961. My new best friend Vince knew a lot about when the factory started making snakes. And I wanted to make sure he knew I was smart too. Vince? Did you know that the Snakes Alive have been produced at the Broadford site since its inception in 1982? But they were long made before this, since the South Melbourne site in 1961. Yeah. Yeah, I did know that. So now I've seen how they make snakes, and now it's time for me to quickly make one of my own and then hit the taste testing room. Okay, so here, as you can see, we've got our lovely, what we call our party mix. Can you still have this even if you're not at a party? You obviously can, yes, because they live here in the bowl for you any time. Thank you. And of course, everyone's favourite, the milk bottle. It's quite ironic that it's tasty as a lolly because you wouldn't eat an actual milk bottle. So if we have a look here at the snakes, if we pick, say, the green one, yeah. what we're looking for is that it's the correct colour also has the correct taste, smell, yep. and of course, stretchiness. Oh. So we have to have the stretchiness correct or the product doesn't go out. So, smell. Yes. Smells all right. Texture. Yes, stretch. And stretchiness. Correct. That one's ready for sale. Why do they call it Snakes Alive? Oh, let me show you. Look closely. I still wasn't sure why they were called Snakes Alive, but I really wanted to pitch some new flavour ideas to Linda. Chocolate milk snake. Sounds like chocolate milk shake, but it's a bit different. Extra tasty snake. It's like a normal snake, but tastier. Extra tasty, okay. Yeah. Parmigiana snake. Parmigiana, ah, oh, Italian snake. Sausage roll snake. Okay. What would the sausage roll snake be wrapped in? Sauce. Uh, chicken nugget snake. Chicken nuggets, mm, crunchy. Sausage roll snake. And sausage roll snake again, that sounds like your favourite. Despite those being genuinely ripper flavours, she didn't seem keen on them. But that wasn't why I was here. I was here to shine a spotlight on some everyday Australians. Have you ever seen a real snake get into the building and, and then it slithers around and it looks really confused and it's like, what's going on here? What are all these little snakes? <laughs> It's absolutely great to meet a couple of 
salt of the earth people, or should I say sugar of the earth. Right on. Because it's a lolly factory. Personally, in my opinion, I think you guys do one of the most important jobs in the country. Imagine if you stopped and then a lot of kids would be like nagging their parents like, Mom, Dad, where's the lollies? Yeah. Right. I know, I've got two yeah. doors of my own. Yeah. They're always in the back of the car nagging you. They're like, oh, Dad, blah, blah, blah. Ripping into each other, pinching each other. I'm like, buddy, just wait till we get there. Calm down. So you can imagine if you didn't have lollies to give yes, kids. Yes, definitely. So my yeah. question is, yeah, what do you think about that? Finally, real Australians being given a voice and telling it their way. It was time for me to leave, but not before thanking Vince for this opportunity. Thank you so much for having me here today, Vince. No I problem, really it's a pleasure. It. At the end of the movie, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, Willy Wonka gave Charlie the keys to the factory because of a kind, selfless act. I'd like to present this to you for having me here today. Thank you, that means a lot to us and uh, we really appreciate the kind gesture. Thank you. So, do I get the factory here or? <laughs> <laughs>